Hey everybody, this is Adam Kokesh here on No Force One, and yes, I am running for president in 2020 on the platform of the peaceful, orderly, responsible dissolution of the entire United States federal government. Or to be more precise, I am running to turn the presidential election into a referendum on whether or not the federal government should be allowed to continue to exist at all. And for today's video, we're going to call this Questions for Kokesh, the first of a series of many, I'm sure, and this is somewhat inspired by a recent heated exchange on steamit.com and i have to say i am a huge fan of steamit.com i am a major investor in my time and effort and into the community now and engaging in comments and answering questions and it seems sadly though that while this is a forum where we don't have the the kinds of uh, negative conversations and flame wars that, that you would typically see on Facebook as rampant, it's still a bit of a problem there. And a lot of the trolls uh, who have been trying to confront me have been asking these questions over and over again, despite the fact that I've addressed them many times. And they're not so much asking questions really as, as pointing things out like, you can't do that, that's not how executive orders work, the president would not have that authority. So let me... Uh, turn some of those troll comments into uh, into a polite question. And it's one that I get sometimes uh, from people in person as well. So it's certainly appropriate to address it in a forum like this. So if I may, the question might be phrased something like, Adam, do you really have the authority as the president to dissolve the federal government with an executive order? Is that constitutional? To which I have replied numerous times, no, it's not constitutional. That's kind of the point. Wait a second. I seem to recall this is something that I said in my tour speech last year 60 times in 60 different cities, in fact. Right. We are not doing this because it is constitutional. We are invoking the higher authority that is the Declaration of Independence, which says we have not only a right but a duty to alter and abolish systems of government that no longer serve us. For someone to point out, Adam, you can't do that, that's not constitutional, is really the equivalent of someone during the first American Revolution saying, oh, come on, guys, you can't do that. The king would never approve. Of course the king would never approve. That's the point. So, now, some people have raised this as a legal technicality question, right? Like, well, the executive order, is that really a way that you can do this? Wouldn't a Supreme Court justice or a member of Congress uh, uh, object? To which the answer is really very simple. When the American people decide through the American election process that we are not gonna tolerate the existence of the federal government any longer, no jerk in a suit in Washington, D.C., no congressman, no senator, no Supreme Court justice is gonna stand in our way. Not even this jerk in a suit. And yes, I, I wear a suit when I have to. I call it my politician costume. So just to be clear, if I go into the White House on day one, and I guess I, I should explain a little bit first about the executive order, because I am going to go swear in. Although I have to say, I am open to suggestions here. If there is a more legally sound way of doing this, uh, a less, uh, a, a more definitive way of doing this, I have no problem being open to suggestion. In fact, especially from the Steemit community, I really welcome your input on this. The platform that I've written out right now is five paragraphs on the website, which is more than most Americans are going to read and, and far more thought than most Americans put into their, their votes anyway. And, you know, having done three national tours about this and spoken to, to countless regular Americans, when I tell them I'm running on the platform of dissolving the federal government and resigning, they go, wow, that's awesome. Where do I sign up? I would never vote, but I'll vote for that. And the process, as five paragraphs right now, is going to be developed into a 100-page book, American Freedom. That's the follow-up to my book, Freedom, that you can get for free at thefreedomline.com slash freedom in every digital format possible, including audiobook. The next phase will be to take that book and give it to a, a team of lawyers and policy experts, lock them in a room for a couple months and say, turn this into a comprehensive executive order so that we can have it on our website before the Libertarian National Convention in 2020 so that by the time it, it's time to actually cast a vote for me, which is not voting for me, just to be clear, we are turning this into a referendum. You can vote for an old party schmuck Republican, an old party schmuck Democrat, or you can vote for this exact plan, this executive order. So 
I welcome your input in developing the platform to make sure that it stays as possibly in line with the principles of voluntarism. But more importantly, it's about localization. We can achieve a voluntary society not by arguing and debating, and for far too long, the libertarian movement has been a debate club instead of the political force that it needs to be to achieve mainstream success. So, in order to do that, we have to put aside our ideology for a second and say, these are our principles, but this is how we apply them to come up with practical policy that immediately improves everyone's lives. Let's get rid of the federal government, the state governments, get it down to the county level, and at that point, we're pretty much done. Really, at that point, government is so local that it's voluntary enough you can opt out on your own property, you can secede, you can create new communities that are completely separate of any system of governance, whatever you want. That's the objective of this. But if we sit here and argue about philosophy and ideology and never put forth practical policy, then we're never going to win. So localization is how we achieve voluntarism. In order to get there, we still have to confront the state directly, and that's what this is about. We have to build a consensus to get people to withdraw their support. Now, some people say, well, that's not necessary. We can just have agorism, which I can prove mathematically is not going to end the state. In the first American presidential election, less than 2% of the population voted. Remember, white land-owning males? And the government didn't say, well, gee, <laughs> We don't have a mandate. We're not legitimized by your vote. I guess we're just going to go home and let you be free. No, they said, screw you. We're the government anyway. No amount of voting will ever legitimize the state. This is an absurd position to take, to say that voting legitimizes the state. And if we got 95% of the population to be agorist and practice agorism, you would still have 5% working feverishly to support the government to pay for the guns and point them at the rest of us. That is not a viable strategy to say we're just going to we're going to we're going to we're going to opt out on our own and we're going to allow them to continue this violence even if it's not about us, even if we're capable of protecting ourselves and living free on a seastead or or a homestead out in the middle of nowhere. Well, if the rest of the country goes to, to a more extreme form of statism, not only are we more likely to be subject to the American government's foreign policy, but we're living in a less vibrant world because people aren't free and we don't get the benefit of their economic contribution to the rest of the world. So, when I get sworn in, I'm going to walk to the White House and sign this one executive order. In this executive order, I resign immediately to become custodian of the federal government, going in as a bankruptcy agent. Therefore, it is, an entire, it is entirely in line with the principles of voluntarism. I'm not going to take on any unjust authority. When the American people tell the federal government you can't exist any longer, I intend to provide the service of a bankruptcy agent to carry out this executive order in which I would have almost zero authority anyway, really just the authority to replace the custodians of each department should they fail to meet their obligations because it will all be laid out in this executive order. Like I said, the American people will know exactly what they are voting on. So, so the next question in this is, but Adam, how can we trust you? And the answer is, you don't have to. This is about a paradigm shift. There's nothing that you can do to stop an idea whose time has come. Like I said, no jerk in a suit in Washington, D.C. can really stand in the way of the American people when as a collective, we have made up our minds and withdrawn our support that they use as the illusion for their authority through the voting process. So, on day one, let's say I go in and say, all right, and they, they, they bring me the executive order. Adam, here you go, Mr. President. Here's your chance to resign. Here's the uh, executive order to dissolve the federal government that was on the website. Here it is. Just sign it. And I say, mm, nah. Bring me, the, uh, bring me the dictator for life executive order instead. Shoot me. Yeah, if you have to, just shoot me. Now, I, I hope realistically that you're going to be able to somehow drag me away from the guns of government in handcuffs and lock me in an insane asylum if I were to try to do something like that. But really, it doesn't matter. Because once the American people have decided, then and, and, and there, ha there has been that national, irrefutable, unobjectionable consensus that we are not going to allow the federal government to continue to exist any longer, it really doesn't matter who tries to stand in their way. If it's my running mate or someone who would be in the line of succession for the presidency, for the uh, you know Speaker of the House or whoever it may be, 
take them out too by whatever means necessary. Hopefully you can do it without any violence. But I would expect that anybody who would want to sign on as my running mate would make the exact same commitment, the pledge with their life, as our founders did, with their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. And I will, I would not accept someone as a running mate if they were not willing to make that same commitment. So, at least for today, I hope that answers your question. I don't know how I'm going to continue this series, but uh, I do a blog. Excuse me, uh, I, I do a blog at steamit.com/slash at Adam Kokesh, where I post videos and blog posts regularly. I get into the comments. I upvote comments because I want to spread the love and the wealth on Steamit. So, if you want to be a, a part of that, if I see you know another question emerging as a trend, please go ahead and uh, comment there. You can also email me Adam at thefreedomline.com. I'm open to all interviews and all debates that, that are put together properly and professionally. So if you want to schedule me for an interview, if you have further questions, feel free to email me, adam at thefreedomline.com, and we'll set something up. Thanks so much for watching. Mwah.